Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single enemy, every single everything in The Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined, as always, by a man who's willing to die on that Cypress Hill, Gary Butterfield. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you like that one? I took it, it took a... You know, the end, the first, we're, it's still Monster Blitz. It's like Monster Blitz Part 24 or whatever. We're going through all the monsters. You made yep. us go through all the monsters because you're yep. fucking sadists. And we are cruising. We are cruising. So today, our first monster is Membrane. And I was like, Comma. Well, I, I don't Insane know what that is. The. Insane in the. That yeah. one. And Gary, do you think it's fun that Cypress Hill now does perform with uh, orchestras? Like in the Simpsons yeah. thing? You know, there was a time in which I would have found that pretty fun. Yeah. I think now with the everything mashed together with everything, like uh-huh. everything X everything. Uh, okay. Stuff, so you I like mean it a little be, bit less. You, you becoming old. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, just it's, it, you know, it's, it's a real thing. Like the uh, everything cross everything. You know, you go in the store and it's like Doritos cross Mountain Dew and stuff. I, I find that just to be a little bit tedious now. It all feels like marketing stunts. And I don't know how else Cypress Hill was going to stay, you know, in the yeah. news. Yeah. So we, I, yeah, I think that's just getting old though. It's, it's mostly getting old. Yeah. Cause you've seen it a bunch of times. Now. Yes. Yeah. Even that, though there has been an uptick. That episode, uh, that, that, uh, cover, that violin cover of Insane in the Membrane. Mm-hmm. It's fucking good, man. It's real good. Do, 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 Yeah. It's super catchy. Good, uh, good ringtone material. Oh yeah. If we still had ringtones, man. Yeah. What a, sadly. what a lot. Fucking as as the world's a number one advocate for the musical stylings of Crazy Frog, I really, I really it makes me sad. You missed your era. If you uh, no, I was born, there. No, I was I there, know, but well, you you died too late. I, I that's, mean, that, that's you don't I hear mean. that one as much. <laughs> that's like yeah. a real Walter White sentiment. Yeah, it's it's a, literally a Walter White. You missed your yeah. chance. You could have died just rip a dip 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 dip. You know, right in the middle of the rip a dip dip. <laughs> yeah. Crazy Frog. Era. Let's go crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you could have, you could still have that played at your funeral. I mean, it's certainly going to, if I have my way, yes. it will appear at Duckstream this year. Yeah, I know. What? What's that? Why you got something? <laughs> Gary, I want your Duckstream goal to be more, being more supportive of my ideas this year. <laughs> well, I won't tell you what I want your goal to be. I, I have, I have a proven track record of bad ideas that turn out to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most of the time. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, it's 51%. Gary, Gary it's, yeah. it's really too early. The call only says 331, <laughs> but the voice in my head says, go fuck yourself. And that's not a good combination. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Breaking Wario. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, Breaking Wario. Man. Yeah, Gary, speaking of bad mashup culture. Yeah, Malter might. Yeah, uh, uh, what are some other webcomic premises we could uh, <laughs> really just shit out? Man, uh, at band practice the other night? This really, my favorite five words to start, or uh, six words to start a sentence. Yeah, uh, we were throwing out uh, nine, you know, 2002 gamer webcomic shit. With, to an embarrassing degree, I, the neighbors should have called the police. Uh, it was it was all it was all control delete bullshit. Yeah, I'm waiting to hear a couple examples. No, too bad mm-hmm. they they died in the backyard. <laughs> really? You're not, I'm not going to get here because I, I, I'm having trouble picturing what you mean. It was it was a lot of like uh, you know you log on to a game, but then something real happens. You know, Gary, I, like Gary, kind of you, you understand that you started this part of the conversation, <laughs> I, right? You I began know, a I, segment. Do you understand that I regret it? I, <laughs> that, <laughs> is that coming clear yet? It, I, it <laughs> just, no, uh, no. just how did this just give me some breadcrumbs here, man. Help me get through the, the, down the so trail. I'm a hard time remembering the exact breadcrumb thing as well. Um, let me, uh, we're going to do another Andrew. You know how I like to text Andrew during this show? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can get the exact promise. Cause I don't remember enough of it for it to make sense. Okay, great. All right. Okay. Uh, so I'll let you send that text. I'll talk about monsters a little bit. Okay. Uh, we are in a class of monsters 
this week. Uh, again, we don't do these by classes. We just get lazy. Yes. Uh, but they all share a common theme, which is that they are big enemies that split into little enemies. Yes, that's true. Uh, I didn't even put that together. Yeah, yeah. there's uh, there's five of these guys. Yeah. Um, this guy's a big brain. Yeah, this is the Mem Brain. Uh, big M, E M, Big B, R A I N. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. This guy's kind of a pain because unlike the brain enemies, which he splits into upon death, he can shoot. I don't yeah. burp there. Uh, he's big. He's also a big guy. So lots of lots of area denial. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, that's you know, taking up probably, you know, I, I don't know, some fraction of a room. Yeah, I'm get, trying get to think to of, it. yeah. Get two of these guys. Uh, that's a pretty large amount of the room getting area denial. filled up. Yeah, area denial. Ooh. Um, what did you do this weekend? Uh, Gary, I'm in the middle of like kind of a depressive spiral of loneliness and sadness, so very little. Why do you ask? I don't know. I was just trying to get us off monsters. Been playing uh, a lot give... of the... Yeah, I know, Gary. We're burning, fucking burning. We're material. cruising. And I was trying to get and give Andrew time to get back to me before I forgot that. And so you just kind of tossed out like the most anodyne, small talk, bullshit question in the world? Well, I, I didn't ask you that before in the green room. I wanted to know. Oh, okay. And maybe I uh, thought it would, it would uh, it lead into something, you know? You never know. I don't know. I'm, there's Gary, one thing is, you know how I, I crave novelty and thrive on the new? Yes. There's no video games, Gary. They just not put mm. them out for like a like two months. There's no video games. The summer doldrums, yeah. It, we're really in those old... Uh, Cow latitudes, wherever the fuck they're called. I don't know. What are they expression. called? The, the dog days. No, man. The this cow is latitudes. a this is a this is a nautical term. Uh, I'm typing in. I'm googling bad latitudes. <laughs> That's a good name. Uh, which is the name of a band? Couple bands. It looks like the bad hmm. latitudes. Uh, uh, you know what, Gary? I'll I'll. At some point, you'll be talking, and I'll tune out, and it'll come to me. It'll pop Uh, in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But anyway, so I've been playing a lot of The First Descendant, which is very grindy. Okay. Gary, I've been thinking about this. I need one more friend Mm -hmm. is an issue in my life. I have three friends. Yes. Uh, And I have now. Oh, uh, no. It it was my three groomsmen. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I, know. Uh, I had three, right? Fuck. Yeah. Embarrassing. Okay. Uh, I was like, did I, did I forget gerbil? No. And I've now turned all of them into scheduled content creation? Yes. Kevin, we don't broad... I, with Kevin is the only one... Uh, I play Arkham Horror with him on Saturday nights. And we aren't... I'm not recording or broadcasting that yet. But that's really only because I'm doing a copyright uh, iffy version of the game yeah semi-legal illegal um <laughs> well it's you know uh zero is a percent yeah like it's, G- it's good yeah, yeah. Um. uh i i need I, I guess i'm petitioning uh guppy nation does anyone want to be the friend i don't talk to but if it's like midnight and i want to play something grindy online we don't talk. We just play missions in the first Descendant. Hit uh, me up. Somebody will take. We'll take you up on that. I bet. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm being halfway sincere when I say it, but I'm also being halfway sincere when I when I say I will probably ignore anyone who take tries to take me up on this. The fuck is I'm, the first? I'm a Ascendant? complicated cat. What? what is the first Descendant? The first Descendant is a free to play Destiny like. Okay. Uh, it is mechanically uh really fucking solid i i regret to say it's like warframe in that sense except it isn't so insanely esoteric that yeah. you'll never uh i i've I, every now and then i try to dip into warframe and it is like walking into a sexual subculture you do not know the rules of yeah like just walking into like whatever the club for pony play or whatever when you have not been reading the pony play wiki yeah, you never even seen Black Beauty. <laughs> like you, you, don't, you don't know shit about this. Like, yeah. First Ascendant is much more accessible. It's it's like grindy. It's fun. Like uh, like a grindy co op shooter. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, with the weirdest fucking naming conventions. 
everyone's either like Ezio or Alpha or all those kind of names, or several of the bad guys are named things like Jeremy. <laughs> or do you, does he do his ultimate where he speaks in class today? Gary, that's a fun joke about a school shooting. Well, self. So, Jeremy yeah. shoots himself, right? Uh, Jeremy, boy, gnash his teeth, bit the recess lady's breast. How could I forget? I'm trying to trying to think. Sure. Um, I think it's unclear whether okay. he shoots himself. I mean, it's yeah. He spoke in class today. Yeah, like in in general, like I think you know, it's a uh, it's yeah. I think it's unclear. I think it's it's not like when Janie brought a gun and something clearly bad happened. Yeah, J- Janie brought got a gun and that's no good. Do you think they they would get along? Do you think that there's a uh, fan fiction between Jeremy and Janie? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah that's uh, a good AO3. Right. I'm not going to actually look for it. Uh, yeah. Is um, there anything? So try to forget this. Try to erase this from the blackboard. That does suggest. That sounds like he, blood. Yeah. You Gary, know? it sounds just like blood. I think yeah. you are really picking up what Gone Eddie's putting down. Side chat, baby. We <laughs> interpret what the masters lay down. <laughs> Gary, what if you, what if you guys, and I'm, I'm hurting my own financial stability here by <laughs> suggesting this. What if you put Elden Ring aside or sure. put Shadow of the Earth Tree aside and just did a season on, on a 10. Pearl Jam album? Yeah. On 10? <laughs> yeah, on Pearl Jam's 10. Yeah. Uh, this episode, Even Flow Part 1. And then after every song, we have a round table where every, we call it the Pearl Jam Jam and everybody can write in about their thoughts about Come. Even Flow. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Come. Yeah. Um, that would be hard for me. Uh, you know what the worst case scenario in that is? Like when my when I actually explore it with my brain? Yeah, man. Is uh, we start it and Cole's like way into it. Sure. Cole seems like, like loves it, Pearl it, Jam. It, 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 right? It seems like it My could man be loves possible. Foo Fighters. Like it, it's, it's not that different. I mean, Foo Fighters. The thing. You're. <laughs> I think the Foo Fighters suck. Uh, I, the, 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 you know, but I, I'm just saying I don't. They're not worlds apart. I'm, I, I guess I, now I want to talk about when you listen to Everlong. Sure. You don't get anything out of that experience. Yeah, it, it is a perfectly competently written song. Like it, it is, a, it is accomplishes what it's trying to do. That God, that is such a backhanded compliment. That guitar <laughs> like, riff doesn't do it for you. No, no. It just, it sounds like, like weird cock rock stuff. I don't, like, I don't know what that means. It's just like a good guitar riff. It's a fine guitar riff. It's okay. Hey, we back me up. So somebody back me up here. <laughs> no, Gary, you know that if you're uh, invoking uh, Guppy Slack Stalwart Weep Lord to agree with you on something, you know you're trying to bring up something indefensible. Weep's whole reputation is based on charting out a position that no one else would ever, ever, ever do and then trying to explain why it is completely defensible. Yeah, I, I just I felt like I wanted to borrow some of that energy for this. Yeah, you I don't know reach... it's necessarily defensible. I just think the Foo Fighters suck. I, uh, it's, <laughs> sure, like, it doesn't sound good to me. It sounds bad. Okay, but, but you know, it, it's I don't know if I think Pearl Jam's worse or better. They seem about the same to me. Are but you if, afraid if we... of the big hands, Gary? I don't like the big hands. And I don't okay, like I, I think this might be a lot of like latent trauma of seeing those big scary big hands. Me. Yeah, yeah, the big me hands and the yeah. uh, the Mentos commercial hands. Are those the same video? Those are different I, videos. They might be different videos. Isn't it weird that they did a video that just parodied the Mentos commercials? What? Yeah, what? A, what a I don't think. I want to be clear. I don't think they're funny. Yeah. No. No. They're they're not funny men. Like not even a little bit. It's just the level of like hatred you bring to bear on them. <laughs> They're a little annoying. I don't know. <laughs> They're uh, a little obnoxious. But we start we start doing that thing on Pearl Jam Ten, and I liked that album as a kid. Uh huh. You know. But then we get into and Cole's just like, this actually fucking rocks. Yeah. Like, this is good. You know. And then I'm like, well, shit. Yeah. Yeah. That would be rough stuff. I don't think the bonfire side chat audience would like it either. They would have a really rough time with it, uh, and they're they vocal. Re- they really want to hear about your thoughts on Lita sure. and Horn Sand. Horn Sand, Ansbach. I don't donate at Atelier. that level. <laughs> yeah, it's five bucks. You don't donate at that level? Oh, I guess I do donate at that level. Yeah. I don't listen to that show. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Get it straight. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, yeah don't stop fucking it up. Stop messing with it. Uh, 
Gary, I do. Eva- I, I want to be clear. I was on the stream the other night evangelizing uh, Real Lich Hours. Oh, thank you. You're doing really good work over there, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think so, too. I like that show a lot. Uh, I like recording. It's a lot of work. Yeah, um, it generates a lot of happy Gary, and I love a happy Gary. Yeah, I get real excited talking about that game. The uh, the uh, way you and I are different in many ways. One of the ways is that novelty craving. In a lot of ways, I crave a comfort mm-hmm. uh, in things more than a novelty. So the ability to kind of go in and do this again and really, really pick it apart is very comforting to me. Gary, have you considered playing the first Descendant, a free-to-play Destiny-like shooter that we could play together uh, after you normally go to sleep? Only as if it's grindy. Now I it's, have been going to sleep at like nine thirty. So. I know that's the. Uh, it's <laughs> you're a you're a uh, you're my most high. I'm so glad for this show because you're my most high difficulty friendship to maintain. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, expert mode. I, I'm looking at a little thing on the side of the Guppy Wiki right here that says fifty percent of users found this game's difficulty is unforgiving. I'm yeah, bad. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, would, I would rate you as fairly forgiving, but me. the difficulty is not. Sorry, I talked yeah. over what you were saying. No, no, no. I said 50% of users would live being the other 50% who generally gets <laughs> yeah. away. And you find me unforgiving was the joke. It's just, it seems like the hours where you're conscious are getting more precious. They're getting smaller. I'm yeah. sleeping more. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, I'm sure that's a good sign. The, uh, you know, I, you know that's, that's a fun mix of depression. You know, that, uh-huh. that's, a, that's a depression thing. Um, have know. you considered staying up too late to play grindy video games to cure that? To cure the depression? Well, sleep, yeah. I don't feel it. Like, if I'm sleeping, the depression more is more or less on pause. I do agree that that is a thing very depressed people say. What a, Have you considered sleeping? What if I instead don't... of playing this game together, we took uh, did a sleepover? I mean, Gary, I would love to have a sleepover with you. That's a really fun idea. Yeah. <laughs> like Guppy sleepover recording mm-hmm. and just like hang out and just sleepover. We get Guppy out of the way and then we I like, got I don't two know. couches. Yeah. We can do that thing where we pull out the witch's hair and it's spaghetti. You know? Yeah, man. Light as a I feather, stiff you. as a board. Like both of us uh, just trying to lift one another up from one side with, with four see, fingers. See, that slumber party stuff. The, the, the <laughs> witch's hair spaghetti thing is a more specific. Yeah. That's a Halloween party. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't. Like, no one's busting that out in May. We have a whole evening to to fill out. It's true. You know, we had to stay up oh. until at least midnight for a slumber party. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we're literally at this point describing Duckstream. Yeah, but like a private Duckstream with more activities. We would have to stream it though. Yeah, I guess that's true. It does <laughs> have. <laughs> legally, you and I are not allowed to do friendship things that are not content. So. And we couldn't call it Cam Boys. Why not? Because if we call it, well, I think it would lead, it would, it would, we'd turn up in a lot of Twitch searches. Sure. That such. sounds good. You know, and then you know how every once in a while somebody tunes into Duckstream and they're like, these men are ugly. And like, look at me and look at Will and <laughs> yeah. look at, look at Nick. And they're like, you, you're ugly. Yeah. Uh, you like one of those things. Why, why did you feel like you needed to include <laughs> Nick's name in there? I don't know. Cause maybe make you and I feel a little bit better. <laughs> I'm not, I, I'm Gary. I, <laughs> I'm very comfortable with my level of ugliness. I acclimated to my ugly at like 16. Same. And Nick is handsome. He is handsome. He's angular. Yeah. He's got that Benedict Cumberbatch vibe. He does have a Benedict Cumberbatch vibe. Like he's like something like a short Benedict Cumberbatch. Like something like hey, a second time Benedict you got Cumberbatch. it right without any stumbles. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Gary, can I ask you a question that's been on my mind lately that is kind of a vulnerable type question between men? Yeah. What is a dick? Uh, it's yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna be exposing myself a little bit by asking this question, so I will ask for some grace, some kindness, okay. some some like love. Uh, do you ever yell when you're pooping? No. Me either. Yeah, I say with grace and love. If I were to though. Mm-hmm. What were some things I could yell? I don't know, just like a guttural yell to make the whole thing go a little smoother, just kind of like what? Like a barbaric yop. Gary, Gary, when I was thinking Walt about Shipman this bit here. in my head, do you understand <laughs> you were one sentence ahead of me saying Walt Whitman's majestic yop? But did you just hear me say Walt Shipman? 
No, what? That's really good too, <laughs> man. Oh, yay. That's what Hank was trying to unleash. Yeah. Oh, it's Walter shit. Um, the, uh, yeah, Walt Shipman, Barbeck. Yep. I didn't know you were going for that. I, I, yeah, but, uh, just simpatico. Yeah. We're, well, I mean, we just got a, a good shared reference pool, but yeah, just, I, I don't do it obviously. No, but like nobody's you, you, you you're, you're in a duplex. I hope that's not doxing you. So maybe that's a little different, but just maybe it's not going great and your wife's yeah. not home and you just yell as hard as you can while it's moving and it goes better so for me Mm -hmm. uh this is not this is kindness and grace because you and i have different shit problems but i feel like they're alike in dignity well sometimes i'm having more of a gary shit problem than a real shit problem my my point being that i need to detense if i yell uh i'm gonna have a harder time i can i can never do that so like and i will say sometimes i'll talk to myself every once in a while i've been like oh man or like oh boy or uh, probably the most frequent thing is, come on. I've done I'll do a, a come on every once in a while. I've done some who boys. Yeah, who boy. Yeah. It's like, uh, I like to say that just in case uh, Sam leaps into me right at that moment. Yeah. They never address that in the show if someone's pooping when he leaps into him. Or if the technology has like a little safety on it to make sure that doesn't happen. That'd be incredible. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a good quantum leap. If they do a reboot of that, which they have, they should they make did. every episode it's been that. canceled. It's been oh. canceled. It's probably because they weren't brave enough to do this, this plot. It's actually my theory is it's because they never used the Mike Post theme song. Yeah. What did, did they have? Here you is know what it, it's time for. QLC. It's the QLC, man. Yes. It's it's that time of week. We do it every week, so it's been a minute. By which I mean exactly one week. Exactly one week. Bare Naked Ladies wrote a song about it. No. Uh, is it okay. weird that one week he talks about uh, how hot Sailor Moon is? And he just like put that straight up, put that in a song. I mean, Sailor Moon is an attractive are, young woman. Those are teen girls. Like, and they're presented as teen and they're all too dumb to give consent. I like, they're too why dumb would he to do that? Cons- they're too dumb to give consent. Like is Usagi that... is, 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 is canonically really, really dumb. Usagi Ujimbo? No, Usagi uh, Sailor Moon. Okay. Uh, I, well, I don't think he was that much older than I. You know, I, I, I Gary, I get what you're saying. Absolutely. <laughs> if, if Sailor Moon Spinning was a out. real person, yeah, and uh, someone who was like 25 was perving on her, I'd be like, dude, that's a teenage girl. Yeah, but because it's think... a cartoon, it's cool. In a cartoon that I think does encourage you to some degree to sexualize those characters. I think that the cartoon is, but I mean, it's, it does do that, but I don't think it's aimed at 25 year old members of bare naked ladies. Like it's a cartoon for teens and teens sure. sexualizing teens is different than grown men sexualizing teens. Uh, this is adventure towns. Sam has okay. been to major cities, small towns, even flying a plane three times, which he did not know how to do. This has been uh, the QLC. No, I'm going to bring in a real quick uh, oh. QLC writer. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Doctor Ben Song celebrates his engagement to Addison Augustine and receives mysterious texts during the party that lead him to make an unauthorized leap into the Project Accelerator. That's the QLC did, two. Did you forget that uh, this should be a TV trope entry for the show? I was never reading from TV tropes. I was always doing the wiki. I always the entire... did the reading. It's the, it's. I read some. Gary, the, uh, Gary, the QLC is supposed to be TV tropes. I, I've always done the wiki and I've definitely Because it was some. to contrast with, I think the Kingdom Hearts one. You walk away, you don't hear me say keys. Oh baby, you walk away, you don't hear me say keys. Where we were uh, reading from Wikipedia. You know, I also might have got it confused with the Kingdom Hospital corner. Boy, this show used to be good, and then it yeah, just really... Yeah, you used those really... segments, and now we just kind of log on and see what farts. It's a lot easier to edit, I'll good say, t- not having to do, like, <laughs> the leaks and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Good t-shirt. 
Log on and see what farts. Everything to Guppy. But yeah, Gary, sometimes it doesn't want to, the, the, the process doesn't want to make itself happen. And in that yeah. circumstance, I do find that like, kind of just like a barbarian yell. Yeah. Just kind of, <laughs> cause maybe yeah. it hurts when it's coming out, you know, sure. maybe it, cause it's, it's so stiff and kind of backed up. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you're yeah. yelling, you're focusing on the yell. Instead yelling. of how much the poop hurts coming out of my butthole. Yelling in pain, I understand. It's not yelling in pain. It's not yelling in pain. It yelling is yelling through. It's yelling through. Yeah. Like like I'm giving birth. Have you considered having a stick to bite down on? That seems worse. Yeah? It's silent. It seem- Why would I want to be silent? Because Why? you could do it when you're at somebody else's house or when your wife is home. You said you do it when nobody's home. Won't you want, yeah. Don't you want to have the freedom to do this whenever you like? Gary, it just sounds so like, I don't know. Part of what I'm celebrating here is the ability to be completely unrestrained. Okay. I think adding a, a constraint to it, adding like literal bondage gear in your mind, God, apparently. Kind of exciting. Gary, you, uh, you like getting tied up? Uh, you know, uh, boy, have I ever been, I don't think I've ever been tied up. Well. Yeah. It might be a conversation to have. It might be a conversation to have. I, I think that, uh, you know, it, it's something to do with, uh, you know, gender roles and stuff. But typically, uh, you know, uh, women I've been with uh, tend to to more favor that kind of thing than favor doing it. So. So you. Now, Gary, this is very disturbing to me. You've tied up women, but never been tied up yourself. I think that is literally correct. I'm searching my okay. memory and you know me and an honest answers. Yeah. I yeah. think that is literally correct. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is true. It's a, it's a known thing. Like a lot of times guys yeah. have to pay women for that kind of thing. You know, it is it's much harder to find ladies who are into tying up dudes naturally. Fair enough. Yeah. There's a whole cottage industry. Yeah. I of course have no paraphilias. Yeah. No, no, we all know. Normal sex. It's, it's just better that way for only one of us to like. Com- like, you are self-employed, and I am not. Yeah, it would be weird if you just started spilling that tea. Like, right? What? If, what? Like, I turned. What if I turned forty and got really sex positive, and instead of what I am, which is sex positive for other people? Yeah, it would. It would be. It'd throw me. That is a reason to do it. I agree. Yeah, it would. It would really throw me. <laughs> Um, the, uh, like one of the, one of the things you could do though, it most throw me is all of a sudden be incredibly open about yeah. every single, you know, on Guppy, we talk about sex, you we, we talk, talk about, about sex on Guppy, but there's that, uh, veneer of like, when you say something mm-hmm. in a general sense, I do not always know if it is true. That is uh, a very diplomatic way to put that. And I really appreciate <laughs> I it. I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> I worked on that for a long time. Um, Whereas if I say something, I do lie on the show from time to time, uh, but I'm not good at lying. So I like to think that I don't like to think I just happen to think it's true that you probably know whether I'm bullshitting. And then if you ask, I can't then keep up a ruse. Like, as yeah, soon as no, I you're, ask, uh, you're like very bad to play Battlestar Galactica with. I can't. Yeah. Like I stopped playing like uh, my game group was around to the game. I tried to play it and I had to stop. I'm no good at it. I'm a, I'm a Gary, are you silent team. right now? I know. I, I, I know. I can't lie. It would be a fun yeah. bit if I was a silo. <laughs> I just can't do it. It's it feels bad coming out of my mouth. Yeah, Not Gary, a what do you how do you think that was programmed into you? Probably by my Cylon overlords. Okay. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. 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 <laughs> I don't I don't know. You know, it would be fun to think back on a cool abuse thing that happened. I, uh, that yeah, I was too, hoping to get I, one of those like uh Gary Butterfield memories. Yeah. Oh, my dad used to burn me. I, I, don't, I don't know where this came from. I, I think I don't like being lied to. It probably happened because my parents lied to me more than anything. Okay. You know, if I had to guess, yeah. I was, it's just me trying not to be my parents. Like, I would not say my dad was not mendacious. Uh, like, this is a man who stole from my piggy bank as a child. Um, yeah. But, like, I don't know, Gary. I love... Constant, like I love lying in games so much. I know. It makes me feel so good. It's a really or it's being the lied to. drug for you. Yeah. My last, 
Yeah. My last game of Battlestar Galactica was a three-person game of Battlestar Galactica in which it came down to we had to find the Cylon or we were going to die and everyone was lying their heads off or telling the truth. How can you know? And it's the most happy I've been in a game in the longest time. Yeah, no, I, I, it's just it's a big difference between our game types. For people who don't know, Battlestar Galactica is a board game that has social deception elements. Yes. Somebody's a Cylon. Somebody uh, is a Cylon. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a whole host of games like that. That one has a bunch of other board game on top of it. It's not like... Um, oh, it has the most board game on top of it. Yeah, it's it's mostly board game. It's more interesting, I think, than something like Coup or something where it's just... Or Werewolf, obviously. Like something that's just social deception. Yeah. Secret Hitler. Um, you know, it's, it's something more, more interesting than that to me. But, Two rooms and a boom. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just something in my... my I can't do it. Makes me feel bad. We're gonna not good. We're not good at you. not good at knowing what other people are doing it. Uh, you know, I, I, on both sides, I'm bad at it. The um, you know, it's a you know, I'm very comfortable with my weaknesses. We talked about yeah. that last last week. It's one of those things where my joke impulse is to say, "Well, we'll do it at Duck Stream and get you better," but you wouldn't have a good time. I'd have a horrible time. Yeah, like I, really I would, I would pre veto that idea. Yeah. <laughs> like I only get one Duck Stream a year. I don't want to spend it with you social conditioning me. <laughs> Any more than, I mean, with me knowing you're doing it. Yeah, Gary, that's a really good point. Yeah. And I'll think about that uh, when I'm planning stuff. For yeah, just, you just have to be more subtle than just saying like, hey, we're going to teach you about social deception. Gary, the idea of there being a social deception game baked into all 24 hours of Duckstream somehow. Like, I understand that's making you excited. Someone's a traitor. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I understand and, how and every time the viewer you. donates in their name, it takes money from charity. You got me with the messing with the charity part. That is yeah. funny and good to me. <laughs> the, um, Just like every time you donate, you have to say one of the people on the stream's yeah. name. And, if, and every dollar donated to the wrong person, to the traitor, goes to Trump or some shit. It's something horrible. And then you yeah. have to, they have to figure it out. Uh, basically. We'd have to have the total be secret and somebody be like the, the proctor. Yeah. Like keep keeping the, the hands on it. If you ever really want, let's say you were going to die. Okay. Please. You know, you know how every once in a while on social media, they'll take it like a dog's going to die and they give it its best day ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, if you're going to die, I'm going to take you out for wings. I'm going to go play laser tag with you. I'm going to do like two escape rooms and then we're going to do that duck stream thing and I will be the proctor so you can have it and I will convince everyone else to be in on it. And I'll be and the I gamble. Say what? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's just a proctor and gamble. Pretty good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Gary, no, this is like when you joked about my stalagmite joke. Or I, I like that joke. I, I, I don't, I, I like that bit. Um, that's sincerely one of my favorite bits. I know that you don't uh, think it's a bit, but it's it's very funny to me. Gary, thank you for uh, charting your death. <laughs> like out what death you day. think the extremities of my pleasure in this world would be. <laughs> the, uh, I understand how to treat you like a Cenobite. You uh, should come to play laser tag with me sometime. You would have a good time. I would have a good time. I don't like exercise. It's not it's very athletic. You're not allowed to run. You can't oh, even I, heal. Well, I, don't, I don't know if I, if I realized that. Oh my god! You're, you're really proctor. not allowed to run. Yeah. Oh well, then I mean, I, I go. The proctor at my most recent game was not having it with some of the people. <laughs> there was this sixty-five-year-old guy. Uh, I, I go pl I play this tag at Wonderland in Gresham, and they play a video without subtitles that is too quiet to hear the like five-minute briefing video that tells you how to get all the bonus points. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the grandpa was like, "Well, what am I supposed to shoot then?" Just watch the, the woman at one point literally said, just sit quietly and watch the video, sir. <laughs> Wait, grandpa laser tag. Mm -hmm. that's well, he, interesting. Was, he, was, he was taking his grandkids. Yeah, that's cute. He's a, he's one of those uh, wiry grandpas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my one of my friends uh, back in my band days had one of those um, Adonis grandpas, like those mm -hmm. marathon running weightlifting grandpas. Oh, yeah. Like a Jack LaLanne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charles Atlas grandpa. It was it was wild. It's very strong grandpa. And he'd come to shows every once in a while. That's cool. And there'd just be like a strong grandpa in the room. Would he mosh? Huh? No. He would just sit back and watch his daughter play bass. 
Okay. Um, or his uh, his granddaughter rather play bass. No shit. It was his daughter. He was just really old. It was one of those uh, fathers that had a, a kid when they were like sixty seven or Jerry, something. That is that is a very good recovered memory for you to pull, and I'm really Fuck. happy you did. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, shit, that was her dad. It's wild. <laughs> uh, Gary, what does Mama Guts do? Mama Guts uh, is instead of a big brain, it's a big pile of guts. Other than that, identical. Yeah, uh, you know, shoots, uh, shoots, splits into different stuff. Yes. Splits into guts instead of brains. Guts are the little guys that roll around on the the side of the room, uh, as opposed to uh, brains, which kind of scoot around and leave blood trails. These don't these don't leave creep, do they? The big ones? No, I don't think so. Yeah, Um, yeah, but it does the same thing. It's the same shape, basically, Uh, same size, everything. Um, And of course, it paved the way for the dead meat. Dead meat, which is a great name and a great bit of art. Yeah, and a great album by the Tubbs. Um, ah, oh, Gary. Ah, oh, Gary. Sometimes you go where I can't follow. Mr. That's a really obscure poll. Like that's yeah. that. No, nobody likes that band except for me and the guys in my band. Yeah, uh, uh, Andrew, ever get back to you about your uh, cool video game chats? Your no, loss. He wants to talk. He wants to talk about when we're going to practice. When are you going to practice? I think next Monday. Are you still at that same weird recording space? The same weird practice space? No, we record in Andrew's basement. Uh, now, um, we've been there for a long time. Okay. So, I don't know. Yeah. We recorded in the garage. That's your garage, your garage for a while. That's uh, a and then perfectly the, the neighbors garage. complained. People, the oh. neighbors complained. So we had to move to that weird space. Oh, the, the, the neighbors on the left. I have no idea which neighbor Somebody left a note. Oh, that's yeah, good. I know. I know it made us real mad. <laughs> it it might've <laughs> yeah. upset their chickens. It might've upset the chickens. We were mostly singing songs about how much chickens suck. And how much time. you want raccoons to eat them and leave their remains in my backyard? Yeah, and how the how eggs are no good. It was mostly about that. At the Gary, time. you can't you can't go anti egg in America. I know, I know. Well, we that's why this we got is a chased Christian out. nation. We got chased out. Yeah, you know. Um, the uh, but now and pitchforks and politely worded notes. Now nobody seems to care. I'm sure people can hear us, but nobody leaves notes, which is good. I've I've lived near people who played music and. I can't say I care for it. No, it's pretty obnoxious. Like you're not wrong about that. I just don't like getting notes. Um, Do you remember if the note was politely worded? It was. That's yeah. I want to text Andrew about this and fucker. Yeah. Isn't responding to my non band practice confirmation tweets right now. Yeah. He's, he's messages. just trying to, trying to organize his life. Yeah. Uh, he's just trying to, but it's for like a week and a half from now. Gary, you know? even so, Gary, as someone whose life has a fairly large uh, organizing things with Gary Butterfield component, I do sympathize. I, I, I sympathize, but also I want him to to help me with Guppy. <laughs> Give you uh, content. <laughs> yeah. I just I also want to see that note. I haven't thought about that note in a little while. I think he has it's a like, picture of it. Just text him, Andrew, help. It's a B minus Guppy so far. We really need a ringer. <laughs> like, I know we had some good bits about yelling while shitting. Yeah, it's a B minus. Yeah. yeah, I made oh, that Walt that... Chipman joke. That that's at least half a letter. Great. Do you want to talk about the M Night Shyamalan movie Trap? Uh, I saw your comments in the Guppy channel about it. Uh huh. Um, do you think ultimately, as somebody who is also curious about that movie based on the trailer, worth seeing? Y- yes, uh, as long as you accept that you are getting forty five really really enjoyable minutes, and then you're kind of just panning for gold for the rest of it. Okay. I'm probably like, going to wait for it to come to streaming. Like I'm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is, uh, this is the, this is M. Night Shyamalan's movie about the concert that makes you trapped. Yep. Uh, it, the first, uh, this is not a new comparison, but everyone calls it, the, the first 45 minutes of it are basically Josh Hartnett as 47. Okay. In a hip, in a hit man situation. Okay. Yeah, You're just yeah. watching Josh Hartnett like go from smiley dad to looking very steely while he tries to figure out how to trigger a fire alarm or whatever. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, like that. uh, in night Shyamalan, uh, loves his daughter too much to the point where he cast her as the second lead in his movie. Mm-hmm. And she's not an actor. I would not, I would say, uh, I had a very mean tweet about it. Do you want to hear my very mean tweet about it? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see it since I'm not on Twitter. Yeah, uh, I shouldn't be, but I am. Uh, it's so, It was something to the extent of there's a narrative pivot in Trap that requires an actor to match or at least hold their own against what Josh Hartnett has been doing. 
M. Night Shyamalan throwing his daughter into that thresher transcends nepotism and borders on parental neglect. Very good. Thank Real, you. Uh, yoga hosers material. There. It, there is certainly a yoga hosers to the situation. Yes. Yeah. It, it's not running that double nepo baby like that. No, but. no, no. But yeah, well, enough of that. Like a little, little yoga, yoga hosing. That's yeah. for listeners. You've forgotten yoga hosers. Kevin Smith made a movie where he cast as the stars, his daughter and Johnny Depp's daughter. Yes. And made the, they were the they, stars of the movie. And they work in a convenience store and they fight a uh, sausage men. Like, yes. It's, yeah. Clerks, if it had a weird, surreal sci-fi element to it. Yeah. And also, and I say this knowing what I'm damning everyone with, two actors who do not have the charisma of Brian O'Halloran <laughs> and uh, whatever is Jeff Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, significantly less. Yes. The uh, reviews of when Yoga Hosers came out, I remember reading reviews of it. Uh-huh. You know, just out of morbid curiosity. And I love how every reviewer is basically like, you can really tell that he loves his daughter. Yeah. It like keeps coming much. up. <laughs> it's like the one. No, good that's thing fucking they trap. That M. Night, yeah. he casts her as like Ariana Grande. Like yeah. <laughs> she sings, multi- Gary, she sings multiple songs in the movie. Is she a singer? Uh, yeah. She, they're, it's a, it's, she's the singer at the concert. No, I mean, is she a good singer? You know, she's she's not an actress. The, the songs I would describe as a bad version of modern pop where it doesn't have a melody or anything. Yeah. Uh, the, her voice is fine. Okay. I, I will say the first joke in the movie in hindsight really makes me laugh because it's Josh Hartnett's daughter singing not very well along to one of the songs. She goes, maybe someday I'll be a singer. And he just rolls his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard not to see that in the context of M night. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's real good. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Sorry, just night okay. to his friends. Yeah, yeah. Or just M. Do you think that M. Bison's friends just call him M? Uh, yeah, man, I think so. Yeah. Uh, I th- I actually, I think they have a big laugh about how uh, his he's name is Vega. the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's actually Vega. And everyone's always called the other guy Boxer and Claw. Uh, uh, Gary, can I share with you my other trap joke from yeah. Twitter? It, this is fun. I get to share with you my good tweets. No, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, Trap is a movie about a devious mastermind executing a cunning plan to no longer be the worst person with the last name Shyamalan in one of his movies. That's very good and very mean. He's yeah. he's a better his perform he's a, he has a little cameo in it. It's a better performance than hers. That's in, that's impressive because he's always awful in, the, in his movies. He's not very good. No. No. Wow. Well, he's an interesting director, and we need more of those. I think so. I, I'm a vague defender of some of that guy's stuff. I haven't seen any of his th- any of his movies for like 15 years, but uh, yeah, up until hey, the midpoint. Like, I, I, I'm a, I'm a uh, the uh, the village. I'm a mild village kind of liker. Interesting. You know? yeah, I yeah, I feel like there's a little bit of a renaissance coming around on that. This is not a controversial opinion, but the visit's really fun. I haven't seen the yeah, I haven't seen the visit. Um, him coming uh, back around. Like I I was kind of like oh good for him. You know? The Visit is his only movie from the last 20 years where I would say this is actually a good movie and there's nothing at any point where I go, what the fuck? I'm going to go one point further as well. Uh-huh. Okay. I think the idea of a beach that makes you old is good and scary. It is good and Not scary. Not saying the movie I is, is good. I haven't seen the yeah, movie. Yeah, I didn't see the movie, so I can't speak to whether the beach that makes you old is a well-executed concept. Like, yes, if you just say it as a sentence, it's stupid. But you put that in, you know, if that were well executed, just as a surreal idea, like rapid aging based on a location is good and scary. You know, know what? Uh, my friend Kevin, his favorite mm-hmm. movie is Lady in the Water. That's interesting. Uh, Thank you I for find... saying interesting instead of insane. <laughs> that's that's That was my offboarding moment with this guy. Yeah. Uh, with the uh, the critic character uh, in it who he kills. It stinks! Yeah. <laughs> just like, I don't like N... My Shamagon? I oh, no, I, I kind of like because like, because it's Bob Balaban. We're so to be clear, we're talking about the movie Lady in the Water, where a film one of the characters is a that movie is entirely about the structure of stories, mm-hmm. and it contains a moment when the critic character played by Bob Balaban, not to be confused with Jay Sherman, the critic, uh, is narrating the hacky circumstances of, of his own death. Yes. And it's then, kind of charming because it's Bob Balaban. I, I like Bob Balaban. 
Also, fun name to say. It is a very fun name to say, Gary. It's it's one of the secrets of his success. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, the dead meat spits out cysts instead of guts. And when it shoots its blood, big uh, eight way shots at you, uh, they also they bounce off the walls, yeah. which is always a mean trick. He's he's a corpse only thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hard to see exactly what he represents. Um, the brain is clearly a brain. The guts does look like intestines, more or less. The dead meat has a lot of tubes, which to me suggest heart. I think uh, it's literally meant to be a bunch of cysts all mm, smushed together. Yeah, could be. It's got those uh, those little tubies, though. Well, mm-hmm. I think it's also maybe just supposed to be the guts, but dead. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. So several apertures where you could crawl on in. This if was you a triumph. <laughs> Remember when we all liked that? I do. The, uh, you know, and then the, uh, the, the sequel song, also good. I, I really like uh, Still Alive. I think it, as a song, I think it is yeah. a better song. It's not as funny. Oh, do you, you don't mean Still Alive. You mean uh, the second one. Oh, yeah. What, what's it called? Uh, I, I Want You Gone. Yeah. I, I think that is a better song as well. Uh, you know why? John Flansburg helped with it. Oh, Damn. sure. From uh, Timbuga. Yeah, from Timbuga. Um, yeah. Uh, I think a better songwriter than Jonathan Colton. Um, I like yeah, that song too. Uh, Gary, Gary, as someone who likes uh, quite a few Jonathan Colton songs, I would I would still basically agree with that contention. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I think a lot, uh, Gary, you want to hear a really specific poll. Yeah. Jonathan Colton is long time, like uh, they met in college, friends with John Hodgman. That makes sense. On the audiobook version of John Hodgman's first book, the, the first fake trivia book, which I've listened to many times because Hodgman released it for free. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a bit where Hodgman goes through all 50 states and makes jokes about them, which is a okay. very funny bit. And he, on the audiobook version, he has Colton improvise uh, state songs for each of them. Okay. And I have never stopped thinking about him going, Alaska, I'd ask you, but you'd probably say no. I don't, that's not funny. It's not a no. joke. It's just I think about it every time someone brings up Alaska, the home of Northern Exposure. The uh, also biting uh, John Lennell Steves for state songs, the, uh, who also started a project of doing a song for every state. Um, you, uh, you're talking about Sufjan Stevens? Nope. He was doing an album for two states. Uh, he's, he's still going to do the other that. 48. Don't be shitty. I, 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 he I would like has that to time. He, he, I guess, I guess medical results are, he does have time. He, for a little while we weren't time. sure, but he, he does have time. It seems he's like. going to do it. I can't, I, I've been waiting for Indiana for yeah. like 20 years. At this How point. lucky am I that he did Illinois? Like he did my state and I actually got that one of those. There's a, and there's a John Linnell state song for Illinois and a Sufjan Stephen album for Illinois. Well, you know, Illinois is that special blend of incredibly boring with just a little bit of character to it. I think it's fun to say it is fun. Like it's more real fun, fun to, to say. say than Indiana. Also, uh, Sufjan Stevens, Illinois is the uh, greatest album of all time. So it's a really good album. I like that album too. This is a rare thing. I don't think it's greatest album of all time, but you and I agreeing on a music thing. Uh, I like that album a lot. I listened to it recently. Um, I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, that record. Pred- Predatory Wasp of the Palisades, man. That song fucks me up. Good stuff. The um, I, I've mentioned this before. Have you listened to the Avalanche? The uh, the outtakes from that album. album? I, you know what? I actually never have. It's good. Like, I think you'll like it. There are little bits and pieces of songs from uh, Illinois mm-hmm. that show up in other songs. And it's really interesting. Um, as somebody who, like, this is the most boring fucking thing on Guppy. As I'm very, Gary, I'm very, I, I'm super interested in this and I'm so fucking bored. If, uh, as somebody who's interested in how songwriting works and how I think a lot of songwriters, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. create parts and then will later harvest them for things. It's really interesting to see that in action. Um, there are little bits of like songs that show up, little bits that show up in later songs. That you can see the first drafts of, and they have totally different context, but totally different songs. It's neat. Gary, can I ask you a real question? Yeah. If we were making a movie where one of us was Dr. Frankenstein and the other one was the monster, which would be which? Oh. <laughs> uh, now, in this scenario, can I ask follow-up questions? Yeah. Are you looking for a gut? No. Uh, we, we can. I, 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 I'd kind of like to hear your gut, but I'm also very open to questions. Are we, so we're making a movie. Are we making a movie based on Frankenstein 
So we know everything about Frankenstein going into it. We're casting ourselves yeah. or are we creating a biopic of the two of us that evokes Frankenstein and we're trying to see which one would be in what role? The former. We are okay. making a Frankenstein movie. You would be the Frankenstein's monster. That's really interesting, man. That's, I don't know if you're telling on yourself, but I think you might be. And it's I think I'm telling on you. <laughs> Who the, are you? Uh, How do you figure? Well, I'm saying that you're taller. That's uh, <laughs> not telling on anyone. Um, I also think that uh, in terms of embodying like a, a dead-eyed stare, you're really good at that. Fucking hell, man. You do it a lot when we do selfies and stuff when we're out in public. Like every once in a while you do that Kubrick skit stare and it looks like a Frankenstein. <laughs> this is really mean, man. This is no, like, you do it on purpose was, to be as a joke. I was, was it mean? You're not doing it on accident. <laughs> it's really fucking mean, man. How is it mean? This is bicycle shorts 2.0. I no, don't understand no, how no, What does that mean? Basketball I don't know what shorts that means. I meant. This is a repeat of the basketball shorts thing. I have literally have no idea how that's mean. I just think you do that that Kubrick face and it's really good. You look like a scary Frankenstein. Okay. And you're doing it on purpose. Okay. Okay. Nobody, nobody. When I was like, "Hey, somebody in the guppy slack, explain to me how this basketball shorts thing is mean." No one did it. That's only well, mean in your head. To be fair, nobody in guppy slack listens to the show. That, that is true. There was no response to what I thought was a pretty fun episode. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, not one person said anything about any of it. No, uh, uh, Gary. Real fast, you want to load up the lockhorns for today and just do a plausible yeah. watch real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I have looked at this comic. I, I it's very powerful art. I'll say. Today's. I really, I I'm really enjoying the Lockhorns. Uh, it's okay. good, kind of. Oh, and this is kind of more topical than usual. Uh, oh, Lockhorns. Bunny loves to do Bunny. Lo- Bunny host loves to go a little topical with yeah. stuff. Uh, uh, so in in this Lockhorns, uh, and it's Loretta, and then remind me the male Lockhorn? Leroy. Leroy is Leroy. the male Lockhorn. Leroy's walking into his house. Oh, we uh, can just say uh, boy horn and girl horn if you want. Okay, <laughs> a boy horn. Walks in the house and he's really fed up. He's got his briefcase. He just came back from his job. He's really he's upset. rumpled. He's extremely rumpled. Extremely rumpled. Very Willie Loman. And uh, Girlhorn, uh, or he's saying Girlhorn's just looking at him pretty innocently. She let uh, she let him in the house. Yeah, she was there to greet him at the door. Let's know. Yeah, seems seems nice. Uh, Boyhorn says, "Please, Loretta, you know how was your day?" Are trigger words for me. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, God, I don't. I don't know how I part processing the content of Lockhorns is not part of this exercise. No, <laughs> like, we don't need to analyze the the thing. So my, my plausible Lockhorn uh-huh. with this image, um, I'm going to say, uh, no, before you ask, I didn't get that promotion. Okay. What uh, Gary, do you, are you open to critique here or is this more yeah, yeah. of a free form? No, there's, there's no there's joke in that. No, no, there is no joke in that. That's true. Except and say what you like about Lockhorns. Off. There's a there's a joke. Okay. In most Lockhorns. Um, the uh, how about? And I, I'm criticizing. I'm not offering anything yet. I don't have anything, and I've been looking at this one a lot longer. Well, I, do, I just went for a it's, gut. Like it's okay. This I, no, is no, no I workshop. love it. I love it. Yeah, Gary, this is, this is, this is the fucking process. This is the process. This is what creativity is. Gary, can you put a Lockhorns reference in one of your songs? Yes. Thank you. I, I will write a fucking song about the Lockhorns, and I will oh. wink three times when I play it next time you yeah. watch me. Uh, I will I will say the word wink three times so I know you see it. Yeah, like I like to do whatever Andrew does one of his Battlestar Galactica songs. Call back, Paul Martin. <laughs> call back, <laughs> the, um, Andrew. Please call back so that Gary can yeah, know. I would Gary love can to tell me this control alt delete story. He's just waiting for me to say confirm practice, and I'm not. I'm holding it hostage. <laughs> you fucking monster. <laughs> the uh, okay. Um, uh. The uh, maybe she's saying um, she can't uh, be saying anything. His mouth is open. You're, That's yeah, the I guess rules you're of right. Lockhorns. Uh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, this is live I, creativity. I'd ask if dinner was ready, but I don't want to know. Gary, that's good. I like Thank that. You. Yeah. Um, yeah. Plausible Lockhorns. That is a plausible Lockhorns. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, l- let me see what I can come come up with. I will edit out if this is a long silence. Yeah. Um. Let's see. He's unhappy. He's she seems nonplussed. He's cutting her off. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I do think you had something with before you ask. Uh, the problem with this is it's so easy to go comedically dark when you're doing a plausible lock. That's it's, that's it's, the lock horns. Yeah, it's the number one. It's the number one pitfall of people doing plausible lock horns is that like uh, like riffs are funny, but they're about them killing each other. Yeah, which every now I did see a real one that was uh, Leroy saying uh, Loretta was saying you you die for me. Can we find out when? Oh, that's, that was pretty dark. That's a pretty dark, uh, plausible Lockhorns. He's, dark Lockhorns. Uh, remember in the mid two thousands. Speaking of web comics, when like weird Marmadukes and stuff were really big. Yeah, like, uh, Heath, it, Heathcliff works in that territory yeah, right now. Heathcliff works in that territory. Like you could have, you know, if if Lockhorns was more popular. That could have been our, we could have had a coffee table book by now. I really, it's really interesting to me how many people don't know the Lockhorns. Uh, Same. And keep telling me, what are the Lockhorns? Keep asking yeah. me. Yeah. Well, there's a whole, you can go to their website and you can look at the, the about section. It gently pokes fun at two people living together in committed partnerships through the antics of a married couple, Loretta and Leroy Lockhorn. And there's a whole character section where you can learn about the characters. Like you just yeah. go to this website and you get to learn all about the Lockhorns. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's quite easy to actually to get almost all of the information that you need like about two, the it gets two hundred million readers every week. Fuck duck feed, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Serious? <laughs> oh, I read a, I read an interview with Bunny Host where they had a lot of pictures of her house. She lives in a nice fucking house, man. Fantastic! What a queen. Uh, she's got a boy that draws the strip for her now because her husband died. Okay, I, uh, he, man, he, he draws it up in a tower really in her man. house. Yeah, so somebody needs to to romance the widow Lockhorn. Like, she seems nice. Yeah. Uh, Gary, I'm still, I'm just, I'm really trying to process this. Uh, we do have to end the show pretty soon. I have a doctor's appointment today where I'm not oh, going to talk true. about the lock horns even a little bit. But, because again, like the dark impulse is he's, he's wincing away from the outside world as though, yes. he, so you could make like a vampire joke or something. But sure. Like, uh, when, when I was going to have her talk, I was going to have something about like, kids on a bus or something yelling at him or something, you know, just something about him being a sad sack, you know, like let me guess, you know, the, the neighbor's dog, uh, I don't know, peed on your leg or something again. I don't know what it'd be. That doesn't sound very lock horns, but that's the, the space I was going to play in. Uh, cause he's had a bad day. He has had a bad day. Uh, uh oh, we can. It's a good drawing. I, I like it, this. This would be a good uh, I really like icon. His, I really like looking at his face with his mouth yeah. so angry. <laughs> it's really uh, good. He's having a hard time. His head is flat. My man's got a flat head. Don't bug me, Loretta. I'm stuck in my mid midlife crisis. Really good. Thank yep. you. I'm I'm yeah. I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, that's really really good. Yeah, plausible uh, lockhorns. End of every plausible episode. lockhorns. We're yeah. going to keep doing it until someone laughs at it. Yeah, I, we like it, and that's all that matters. Ducky.tv. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> I was thinking about this genuinely philosophically, that mm -hmm. there is an actual artistic merit in trying, both in the limitations of the form and in trying to do a kind of comedic mimicry inside your brain Yeah, that, that, that is actually genuinely pleasing. You are not trying to improve upon, upon the form, no. really. My it, ours are both funnier than bunnies this today. It, that doesn't have same to be thing. the case. I enjoyed it with plausible garfs too. Yeah. Also, two days ago, the Lockhorns was fire. Uh, they're eating dinner, and he goes, "This sauce isn't half bad if you put ketchup on it." I like. Yeah, I like. Uh, oh, if you go, I, I'm reading the Lockhorns every day. I've been putting these on Twitter too. I've been plausible locking every day, Gary. Well, okay. Good. Good work. I need to get back into practice. Um, there was uh. There were a couple of dour ones. There was one that really hit me right between the eyes about a week ago. Uh, I'm clicking back through it real fast. We had a, there, here's a plumbers of the real power behind the yeah, throne. That's not go. good. Yeah. Oh, is it uh, today is mojito Monday? Then to kill That one's Tuesday? very dark. I That's do appreciate that. Um, there's, I think I'm almost there. I'm sorry. There we go. It's, uh, if we didn't have company coming over, we'd never clean the house. <laughs> that fucking got me true. dead. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So somebody, you know what? So somebody seduced the widow Lockhorn. Um, yeah. Bunny host. She's a uh, very, uh, she's one, she's gone, uh, leathery old lady, but she seems active. Yeah, well, you know, and, and also, I don't know, cha-ching. Uh, if you like this show, patreon.com slash TV. 
Yeah, we yeah. did the QLC this week. I have to go dig up wherever the <laughs> fuck those stingers are. Yeah. And he has a doctor's appointment. I got a doctor's appointment. I've been getting so dizzy when I lean over and I got to ask the doctor if I'm dying. I'm, I'm glad you're getting that checked out. Yeah. Uh, so is my wife. Patreon.com slash DuckFeedTV. You can also leave us a rating review on Apple Podcasts or Podcast Addict in the form of a plausible Lockhorn. My wife, without a lot of con- uh not contemplation, uh, consultation with me, bought me two grabbers. That's so <laughs> I was leaning over last. I was like, yeah. hmm. This That's is a very a considerate. This is yeah. a very considerate gesture that makes me feel like shit. That is a that is a real considerate red flag. Yeah, going to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> considerate red flag is a good t shirt. Uh, uh, like this review. I don't think you set me up for that necessarily, but uh, oh. by Zay Nation, left on podcast addict. Everything to Guppy is a premium podcast at a freemium price. I had to decrease my Patreon donation because I just bought a house, but I still want to give a little guppy bump because it's truly one of my favorite podcasts. Side note, did you know Massachusetts lets you voluntarily pay a state tax rate of 5.85% instead of 5% if you want to? It was a joke at first, but about a thousand people a year do it. That's why we're called the guppy bump state and why my bump (laughs) is only 85 cents. If that's true, that's insane. Yeah, thank you, Zay Nation. Thank you, Zay Nation. Uh, Till next time. Uh... Hopefully Andrew gets back to me. Hopefully Andrew gets back to us.